Over to the floor then, who'd like to kick us off? Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey Matt, pleasure to meet you. Obviously you Southampton born and praise. So uh, you're, uh, yeah, a god. <laughs> um, I personally would consider you among one of the greats of the modern Premier League era. Um, looking at that video, I think you can all agree with it. <laughs> but um, would you agree that your place among uh, the greats of the Premier League is some not jeopardised, but not taken as seriously because you played for a smaller club and not a bigger club like United? Yeah, I think that's that's always the case in football. I think uh, uh, a lot of football fans mentality is that uh, to be a great player you have to have played for one of the great clubs um, you know they, they kind of think you haven't played for a Manchester United or a Barcelona or Real Madrid uh, and you haven't won any medals and you can't be you can't be a good player um, so whenever I, I kind of get that argument I, I kind of get YouTube up put that up and go <laughs> <laughs> not bad was it <laughs> so yeah it, it does a little bit but you know what it, it really does I, I loved my 17 years as a professional footballer um, all those things that, that happened there and all the other goals that I scored and, and memories that I'll take with me throughout the rest of my life and hopefully um, I've given people like you and, and obviously people a lot older than you guys here who probably couldn't barely remember my career now um, a lot of memories to take with them uh, throughout their lives as well supporting Sarton Football Club Yes, Hi man, I remember that you played for a big club I mean obviously you're, you love your son with Southampton but does part of you ever wish that you had a chance to play for one of the biggest ones? Uh, no, I've, I've never had any regrets about uh, staying at Southampton my whole career. Um, you know, it was, uh, I, I've always been quite a loyal person to, to my friends and, and that kind of stuff. So um, I always felt that Southampton were the, the team that took a chance on me. Uh, I was just a little kid from Guernsey. Um, you know, very few footballers had ever come from Guernsey before. Southampton gave me a chance to, to make it as a footballer. Uh, and I felt like uh, I owed them something uh, throughout my career. And at Southampton, I was able to play the game how I wanted to play it. You know, I kind of I was a little bit different than, than most people. Um, I viewed football as an entertainment industry first and foremost. And people spent a lot of good money to go watch football, and I think they deserve to be uh, coming away from football matches thinking, "Wow, I'm glad I saw that today." And that was kind of. The moments that, that I lived for, and that's what I tried to give to people when they came and watched my football matches. Yes. Well, uh, um, how much have you enjoyed your role with the media on shows like Soccer Saturday? And did you ever consider being a full time coach instead of moving into TV? Uh, I never really enjoyed the coaching side of things, it, it never really was a passion of mine, so uh, I didn't really consider that too seriously, uh, if I'm honest. And the, the, the TV side of things kind of appealed to me a lot more. Um, I think the fact that you can kind of do your job without any pressure, you know, you go into management, you're under pressure with results, you know, you, you're always facing the sack if you have a bad run of five or six games. So uh, I didn't really want that in my life. Um, and I quite enjoy keeping involved with football um, without having those kind of pressures around. And the, the job at Soccer Sack is, is perfect for that. You know, I get to watch football every weekend through the week. It's a great excuse when I'm at home and the wife wants to watch Coronation Street. <laughs> and I go, sorry, love, but we've got to have Champions League on it's my job and I've got to watch football. <laughs> she can't argue, it's brilliant. <laughs> yes, sir. If you, wouldn't, uh, if you didn't pursue football, what would you have pursued as a career? Um, well, my entire childhood consisted of sport, basically. Um, I was quite good at a lot of sports. And I think if I hadn't been a footballer, my next challenge would have been trying to be a cricketer. I was, uh, I was quite a decent batsman um, back in the day, and, uh, and I kept wicket as well. So uh, that would have been that would be my next choice. Right at the top. Do you think young players get too much too soon? Oh, hundred percent, absolutely, yeah. And I think we really struggle in this country because of it. Because I think you see a, a hunger and a desire for these players when they come and they break through into the first team and everyone gets really excited about them and they go, this is the next big thing. And then you get given the big contract and 100 grand a week and you've got everything you could ever wish for. And it just takes a little bit of an edge and that's all you need to take off somebody for them to go from being top draw to being pretty good. When you want to try and win something at an international level, you need a lot of players in your team who are top draw. Uh, and I think 
by the time that our players get to that level, they've kind of got everything they want in life and a little bit of the edge has been taken off. And I think that's one of the reasons why sometimes we struggle at, at international level. I, I think there should be something around that should kind of look after these players a bit better in terms of their finances. Maybe, okay, maybe they've earned that contract, but don't give it a don't give them all straight away. Just give them a percentage of it. Don't let them even see the rest of it. Put it away from somewhere and just give them a little bit of it and just keep them hungry and just kind of try and keep them grounded a little bit, really, because I think the money that they earn sometimes, it makes them think that they're um, almost invincible in this world and they can go and do whatever they want outside of football and get away with it because they're earning all this money. Um, and I think it's, it can be quite dangerous to give young kids that much money so soon and I think that the clubs need to take a little bit more responsibility for it. Yeah. Do you think that that's changed at all in terms of getting hit from the international teams up on the reputation or form um, like Danny Greenwald from getting hit from the Japanese game in terms of that? Yeah, I think there's there's a bit of it that goes on. There, there is a snobbery amongst uh, the England hierarchy about which club you play for still a little bit. I think it, it's not quite so bad today because you kind of haven't got the amount of players to choose from in this day and age that you had 25 years ago. Um, so, you know, when I look back at my career and the, and the players, the English strikers and attacking midfielders that we had in those days, there was a lot more talent around to pick from in those days than we've got now. Um, so it's actually, because of the numbers, I think it's something like between 30 and 35% of all players that start Premier League games are English now, as opposed to probably, it was probably near 80%. When, when I started so it's a, it's a huge difference and so if you are playing regularly now in the Premier League and performing well you do tend to get a chance yes sir of today's current Premier League managers which one would you most like to work on and why oh, another good question a lot of the Premier League managers today actually insist on um, their forward players pressing the ball quite high and defending them from the front so <laughs> I'd have to cross a few of them off my list. <laughs> um, but as a personality, uh, I think Jurgen Klopp is, is is very infectious. He's a kind of manager who kind of really would want to want to go out there and play for. Uh, and I think in his early years at Chelsea, Jose Mourinho would have been on top of that list for me. Uh, but I think the last couple of years, he's just lost his mojo a little bit. He doesn't seem to enjoy his job as much. He's not quite as charismatic, and he moans a lot more than he ever used to. Uh, so he's he's chopped down the list. In fairness, though, we're we a lot more passionate than Chelsea Carrick at the club. So, well, well <laughs> this is true. I, I wouldn't say that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Matt. If you were playing today, would you be tempted by a move to China? Or if you were going to leave Southampton, would you want to move to the top Premier League or European club? Uh, I, I wouldn't probably be tempted by China now. I think if, if, I was, if there was going to be a move, uh, I think in this day and age, you'd probably, you know, if something like a Real Madrid or a Barcelona came in for you, I think that would be uh, a far more tempting move, albeit not financially more tempting than China, but from a purely football point of view, um, you know, that would be a much better option. I, I do kind of look at it and, and not despair, it's not the right word, because it depends what, what the player's ambitions are. You know, you've got somebody like Oscar, who's a fantastic footballer, you know, still got his best years ahead of him in football. And yet he's chosen to go and uh, take the money in China and kind of kind of disappear really out there in China. You don't really get to hear about it, you know, globally it's not it's not massive. Um, I'm not sure it's, it's ever gonna be uh, out there. Uh, and you think, you know, yes, you're gonna be financially sorted for the rest of your life, but had you played in Europe, carried on playing in Europe, you probably would have been, unless you're really stupid with your money, you can still earn enough money in Europe and have the exposure to, to all the world football that, that you need without having to go and kind of take obscene amounts of money and kind of be forgotten a bit, really. Do you think it could impact their international career? There's a chance that um, international managers would look at that and think, well, do you know what, the standard of football they're playing isn't that great when they come back into the international side, are they going to be at a level which is going to be able to compete at that? And I think there's several, there'll be several international managers that we're looking at and thinking, I'm not sure I can trust that he's playing at a high enough standard every week. So yeah, it's definitely going to have an impact on that, I think. Yeah, um, two questions. Uh, one, 
where did the agency look at relegating this season? And two, do you think the league club should do more to help the table for that? Um, okay, the second one is a, is a no brainer. I think uh, there's chances in place that some clubs have taken a long time to. Uh, to put right, um, so I think <coughs> that they. I look, some of them, I'm not criticising all the clubs that Chris. A lot of them do a lot uh, for their disabled fans, but I think some have been a little bit slow on the uptake, if I'm honest. Um, so that needs to get better. Um, in terms of the relegation, it's a tough one at the moment because you know you're seeing teams getting results where you just didn't think it was possible. I mean, six weeks ago you would have said hold the certainties to go down. Uh, they brought a new manager in who's doing fantastically well for them. Swansea the same, couldn't see them getting out of it. I, I'd still probably say Sunderland will go down. Uh, I, I've got a funny feeling that Crystal Palace might join them. Uh, and the third team, I think it might be Leicester. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I, I mean, yeah, I've been watching them for weeks and thinking they can't keep being this bad. They can't keep being this bad. And every week, they're that bad. <laughs> and you just think at, at this point in time that where's the next win going to come from? That's a real story. Next win, next goal. I mean, they only need to score a league goal this year. That's a major concern. Yeah. Uh, just going back to the Leicester, do you think that they they won't improve without getting rid of Ranieri? Do you think he needs to go for them to find some sort of change? Because that's been a lot of the speculation at the moment. It has been a lot of speculation, and I think. Football would be in a, in a very bad place if Claudio was to lose his job. Um, what they did last season was incredible, and you know, for him to to lose his job this season, I don't think. Sometimes football people always look at the manager when things aren't going right. Now last season, those players got a hell of a lot of praise for what they did. And yet, when it starts going wrong, everyone looks at the manager. Hang on a minute. Let's have a look at the players. They've all been given their nice new contracts, their nice big cars, and and you think, are they really as hungry as they were last year? Are they really trying as hard as they were last year? And I'm not saying they're not <coughs> trying, but they ain't trying anywhere near as hard as they did last year. And, and so, for the manager to take the can, uh, to, you know, to take the flak for that would be for me completely out of order uh, and I'd be very surprised if, if Ranieri was sacked before the end of the season. Having had the pleasure of inviting Matt into the university on a number of occasions before, I have to say I think that's probably the toughest grilling you've ever had in regards to <laughs> a range of, such a range and a breadth of questions. So thank you to, to all of you who asked questions because they were some really, really good ones there. Well, but uh, as always, um, it's a delight to welcome Matt into the university. He, he always speaks very openly and very candidly, has a very expansive knowledge, of course, across the, the game uh, as a player, uh, as a pundit, but also in terms of his broader base of knowledge in respect to, to, to all things that are related to football. So please put your hands together and thank.